Welcome back to another show that we do at once a month with my old friend John Dowling. John, how's it going, mate? It's good, mate. How are you? It's been incredibly uh, busy on the uh, the Western Front with uh, every all this crazy activity that's we've been anticipating for a while. But um, dare I say the word excited? Uh, very yeah. uh, anticipating what's coming. I know this, and trying to follow it all is is really difficult. I mean, there's been some crazy stuff happening, not not just geopolitical, but the U.S. has been hit by some extreme weather things as well. Have you seen these tornadoes that have been tearing uh, towns up? I've never seen anything like it, like the video footage we're getting of tornadoes now. So the weather conditions, which I think is manipulated, I don't think that's all man-made. And again, oh, absolutely. designed to cause confusion, keep the fear in the community, you need your government. Um, we got some interesting stuff going on with Trump's little case, how the... Dirty waters or stormy waters, sorry, is uh, is progressing. <laughs> Their star witness has been proved to be a corrupt briber, accepting uh, money, thieving, dipping the till. Um, and then the U.S. Senate has called for Fanny, whatever her name is, to be uh, thrown out because of what her passage. She stole a lot of money that was originally designed for the community, dare I say, the inner city um, ethnic community and she decided to go traveling with it so that's all coming to the surface as well but there's some terrible stuff going on I, and i just can't see how um biden is going to face it we talked about this last time because we're all waiting for this guy the step down of being removed which is one of the marker stones about how we're going to start this great big transformation and a redistribution of wealth because his uh, band of organized criminals represent the old times, the old days. So I'm waiting for that. And also, um, I think the biggest thing is this helicopter crash, allegedly. Shall we touch on that for a second before we go anywhere with that? Absolutely, please. I mean, the helicopter, the, first of all, there was pictures <laughs> of the Iranian high command inside this helicopter. So what are they taking videos and pictures of themselves for? Are they putting in on TikTok? They're from an extremely devout Islamic um, section, and they do not do things like that. They don't believe in any of that westernized TikTok or Twitter or any of that. So why are they having video footage of themselves in helicopters? Then it crashed under mysterious circumstances in heavy fog. Um, but I know from my aviation days that these helicopters are equipped with extremely good weather radar, unless they've banned that in Iran as well, which I can't see them. Um, and then it was in a remote location, couldn't identify, couldn't find the bodies. So I think Israel, That's it smells a bit Israeli, that to me. Now, whether it's a false flag, um, my first thoughts were the U.S. Uh, deep state shot that down, trying to blame Israel, trying to force it into a war so we can get across the border because they've had their greedy eyes on uh, Iran for quite some time. What are your thoughts on that, John? Where are you with that? Well, thanks for asking, first of all, and, and it's good to be back with you again, uh, as always, <clears throat> for our monthly wrap up of things, because so much accumulates. I have a different theory on that. I can, I can understand why you would surmise that. I think most people uh, would believe that. But because of the knowledge and just the uh, insight that we've been afforded looking at the, the puzzle piece from a different perspective or purview, our contention, meaning our team, is this. Actually, it's part of the grave surrender, David, in that Israel is doing its job, right? Their, their whole thing, this goes back to what we talked about with respect to Iraq is probably a good segue to them. Yeah. Iraq is stuck between the U.S. militia deep state that you mentioned and the corrupt Iranian proxies. And I repeat this because, you know, so much information comes out. It's easier for people to have short term memory and forget these, the minutia, the details. But the, the minutia is what makes the whole thing go, right? So... <clears throat> As succinctly as I can say it, Israel is going to be have to be the one that um, splits the difference, that breaks up the U.S. militias and the Iranian corrupt proxies so that Iraq can prosper, as well as the Iranian people, for that matter, with their <clears throat> Rial or Toman, depending on with whether you're in the country or not, right? So Israel is playing the scripted role that they've been told to play, right? They hit yeah. Rafa, they hit Hezbollah, they also hit Lebanon, which is a subtopic we can discuss right now very quickly. You remember in 2022, the Lebanese pound took a 90% hit, right? What if they are devaluing to revalue, right? Which is a lot, a lot of these currencies do. They, they get knocked all the way down and then, you know, they get propped back up now because I think China and Russia are involved in this because they're forcing 
the hand of the, the reset with Iraq because they signed memorandums of understanding over a year ago. And, and China and Russia don't play. They don't move the goalposts like the U.S., right? They actually, they expect you to keep your word because they're going to. They're going to hold you accountable, which in this case for us is a very good thing. So I think Israel is doing their part. Uh, I think they manipulated the weather, the fog. I think they concocted that whole thing as part of the script. Taking out Ricey was a very good thing, ultimately, for the reset, because it takes, these are the people that have held us all down, both in, in the Western world and even in, you know, the Eastern world and in, in, you know, various countries like India and whatnot, yeah, yeah. from, you know, the, the poor and the middle class from getting to the wealth transfer. So those who've interfered are being removed. So what I would say is that Israel is purposely behind this as part of the scripted movement. And the next step is the last step, which is that they are going to hit the secret nuclear power plants of Iran, which will trigger an emergency government for Iraq. They're going to just let it go because it's going to look, the whole world's going to be watching this and think it's doom and gloom. But like Kim Clement said, when things seem at their worst, he'll set his people free and we will see what we've been anticipating for quite some time. Yeah, if you look at the history of Iran, um, the back in the 70s, I, I know a lot of Iranians, John. I don't know if you've ever um, had a chance to sort of get to know any, but I, I've known them, yeah, most of my adult life. I find them really intelligent, very nice, hospitable, friendly. You know, they like a laugh. They like a whiskey. They like a bit of a, you know, a bit of a, a drink as well. But they've always been demonized through the press, you know, evil and Iranians. But their lifestyle back in the in the 70s and 80s, I mean, they were the women were wearing miniskirts and short sleeves and they didn't have to put wrap their heads up. They had ski resorts, had um, nice lifestyle, luxury items, great infrastructure. So this whole Islamic extremism, I mean, a lot of the people don't remember it now unless they're in, you know, slightly older than me. If they're in the mid 50s or so, they'll remember what it was like. So giving people back their freedom and their choice is, I think, is a great thing. So if that was a planned attack to take down the, the extremists who have been um, plotting and planning all of these years to keep the Iranian people living in terror and fear, because basically they are. You know, you, you can't get out of Iran. You're not allowed to travel. It's impossible to transfer money out there. I've dealt with a lot of them in Spain that have, have managed to get out, but... Any transactions coming out of Iran financially, red flag straight away in Europe. You can't get the money out easily. And a lot of these people are trying to get out, reset themselves up in Spain, get the kids into school. And they're really struggling because there's there's still restrictions on the country. So I'd like to think that's true. I hope it is that this is what the plan is. If Israel are taking out the, the top evil elite in preparation for um the new good guys coming in, that would be a very nice end to this entire story of the Iranian revolution. I'll have to look it up when it happened, but I like that theory too, John. It's good. Well, it's, it's, thank you. It's in our case, it's a little more than a theory. It's more of a divine prophetic, prophetic thing that the Lord has shown us, um, you know, through the team's, uh, you know, research, but moreover prayer and discernment, which is really, you know, we always talk about in our team and even to our audience about using discernment. I know you talk about it and, you know, that, that, um, that knowing that, you know, when something you're being lied to or you're being told the truth. Now back to what your point about Iranians, I haven't met any Iranians in Iran, but I've met Iranians through work yeah. here in America. And my, my thing, and I think you would agree with this, I think most people reasonably would agree with this, is that the Iranian people, just like the American people, just like the Australian people, just like you know the Indians in India and uh, the whole of the world, the people themselves are wholly good. Everybody wants the same thing. Everybody wants family. They want peace. They yeah. want prosperity. They, they want to have a purpose. They want to help people. They want to you know, contribute to the betterment of society, regardless of your religion or politics, that stuff goes out the window. There's some fundamental absolutes, David, that we all want as humans to get along and work together, right? Uh, um, absolutely. So yeah, I agree. I was just, I just looked it up there because I was curious. It happened in January 78, the revolution. But if you think about all of these situations, let's just talk about these like terrorism attacks over the years. Sure. It's never been one guy that's just said, you know what, I'm going to get that rifle and I'm going to go out and shoot it. It's always some long-winded conspiracy behind it. I mean, the Gaddafi um, regime was a classic, John. You might remember there was a um, Pan Am airplane blown up over Scotland in 1988. 
Lockerbie was the was the town. So eventually they pinned it on um the Libyans and Gaddafi's gang. And they arrested, prosecuted successfully one man who said he was responsible for it, and they put him in jail. But he was only in jail a few years before he developed such bad cancer that they let him out and uh, he died outside of prison. So he was obviously a scapegoat. They said, look, we'll take the rap for this. You're going to die anyway. Just tell them it was you and we'll leave your family uh, very well looked after. It's It just stinks of cover up and, and a patsy like all the other ones. You know, the JFK assassination is a woman saying, no, the original footage I saw was of the driver turning around and shooting. And then the video footage you're showing me now, the film, there's it's obviously been doctored because as the car drives past, there's a tree there and there's a great big block of tree missing. You know, and then we get into 9-11 and you're telling us it was um it was orchestrated by the Al Qaeda. People don't believe it anymore. And again, what you just said there, people are people. What they want is to live in peace. To not be worried about a rocket attack coming through the roof at any minute when they're watching cartoons and having dinner with the kids. So it's always orchestrated by these political agendas and a very long term plan. OK, let's destabilize this. Let's destabilize that. Let's send a missile into the, an American ship in some far off African country and say it was the local um, extremists that did it. It's, it's just all about how to make chess moves and get the public which eventually gets the money from the Senate because they create all of this. And it's not just the U.S. that do it. And I don't want people to feel that I'm very anti-USA. Uh, I'm very anti-deep state, but we have the same system in, in mostly every country now, You know, especially the U.K. The U.K. is just America's little brother, as far as I'm concerned. Um, so, John, politically and geopolitically, it's very interesting. Sp Trump's doing some great speeches. I'm watching very carefully how his uh, progress is on this silly little trial he's got. Again, it's just distraction. His polls are going like this. His ratings are going up. I just, it would be nice to know what we can expect during this election. Uh, some people are saying, we're not going to get one. Yes, we're going to get one. It's all a waiting game. We just have to wait and see what's going on. But tell us what you've been tracking with some, um, as far as I know, the president of Iraq's one of your favorites that you keep tracking. What's he been up to the last month? Yeah, yeah, it's been a very busy month for Sudani, the prime minister, <clears throat> excuse me, of Iraq. He uh, he came here to the U.S. Uh, early this month, late last month, early this month. Uh, they got everything signed. They got 26 agreements signed. Then he took it back to Baghdad, met with uh, uh, Erdogan, the president of Prime Minister Turkey. They signed their agreements because remember, Turkey is integral in the water distribution as well as the oil and gas law for all the different sects of, uh, of Iraq, the Kurds being the largest populous block, and then the Shiites and the Sunnis. So that was a necessary step in the process. Uh, they had recently, this last week, they were supposed to pick a, a non corrupt, non Iranian proxy speaker of the House. <clears throat> and of course, Maliki's goons. The Obama Sortero slash installed holdover from the past, who's uh, basically, <laughs> I don't know the best word to describe it, but just between you and me, I would say he kind of is cock blocking everything. Mm -hmm. That's probably the best way to put it, it's trying to stall everything in the process because they don't have an ability to money launder and live off the dollar anymore because Sudani stripped that, for all intents and purposes, stripped that element away. So they're 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 gasping for air financially because they're they're losing their control every single day. Yeah. So ultimately, it's a good thing, but it's it can be a painful, slow bleed process more than we would like. But there is a a systematic uh, method to the madness that we don't, as you said, we don't all see behind the scenes. We try to interpolate as best we can. And so you have that going on. So they, they, there was a bunch of fighting for the first time in history that I've been in this, and maybe in quite some time, you had the uh, Iraqi military come in and break up the scuffle, right? So I, that hadn't been seen before, at least since I've been in this for over 11 years. And I think most people who've been in it even longer would agree that that's sort of unprecedented. So he's getting to the goal line to push this. And again, he's getting you know pressure exerted from rightly so, China and, and Russia and even U.S. For, for some faction, because even though the deep state hates competition, they know 
that the hegemony of the dollar, thanks to the BRICS and other things, is done. It's, it's, it's cooked. And we're going to go into some of that in a minute <clears throat> as we progress in our conversation to other countries, respectively, to Iraq. So he's, he's pushing the ball forward. Another interesting thing, David, that just happened is Janine Planchette. We've talked about her. She's the UN diplomat for Iraq US or Iraq UN relations. She has now officially been removed out of that post and there's nobody set to go in because Sudani made a very important statement about a week ago. He asked the UN to end the mission, which is, is big. That has not happened before. That takes all the UN do-gooders out, that, you know, that puts our military on notice to, to decouple out of that region. And you, you'll have some redundancy of troops, whether it's, you know, I don't know, 2,500, 3,000 troops, but that's minimalist compared to what has been in there when the US really had a clamp down on Iraq, right? And you know that <clears throat> from your geopolitical historical studies, it's significant. So he has made that verbal declaration. He's doing all the steps he needs to do uh, we're now, now that Jeanette is out, her next step, ironically, is to a country we just referred to, Lebanon. Yeah. And, and I say that, David, let me back up a second, because that ties to Iraq. She has wanted, she has said, certainly privately, I'm not sure if she said it publicly, but I know privately she said she wanted the dinar to happen on her watch. Isn't it interesting, mm -hmm. no coincidences, of course, that the minute that she's now stepped down out of her post and being shifted to Lebanon to deal with that hot mess, that all these things with Iraq are taking place. I'm sure she made sure to put um, inserts or ins installations in place with Sudani in conjunction with him to make sure that it happens on her watch, right? So that's mm -hmm. kind of her legacy for being in the cabal system. You wouldn't sell your soul to the devil without at least getting a cookie or something for it, right? It's got to be a be payoff. Point? Yeah, exactly. It's got to be some type of benefit, you know, even all the big so-called rock stars and athletes and, and actors, when they sell their soul, they get temporary fame and fortune for a while before the cost comes down. But we know what's going on with that as well. Well, the Lebanon, so, the Lebanon's interesting, John, because it's a big port. They need that this, this the uh, the port access as well. If they are going to control anything nefarious, it's an interesting spot strategically that for them to control. Mm -hmm. We saw that large explosion a couple of years ago one of the largest I've ever seen on camera recorded. They said it was a, a large storage of fertilizer, but I think they've already taken out a lot of the um, the bunker situations there with that one. But that's interesting. That's what she wants. She wants Lebanon, does she? <laughs> well, no, that's not that she wants it, because if you saw the look on the picture that they showed of her the other day, she looked pretty apprehensive. I don't think she wants it. I just think that that's where the UN has tasked her to go next. Yeah. Now that it has been officially dealt with enough to the point where they can you know move it forward i mean there's not much left to do there yeah. all they need to do is appoint a speaker announce all the important laws pass the oil and gas law announce the budget all that's a formality they could do that in in one half day easily they just yeah, yeah. they don't they, they're being forced to do it they don't want to do it but they you know because because you have a, you know the good and the bad guys you know good and evil interlocking and that's the mecca of it right now uh but you know, as I said, uh, David, going back to what we talked about with respect to Israel, that's really the last step. Step Once Israel decides they're, the timing, listen to this. This is pretty interesting, David, how all these events correlate, right? I, yeah. I, you're going to laugh because I, I did too. What a coincidence that the minute Israel decides the moment they're going to attack the secret nuclear power plants, XRP, Judge Torres, will render her decision that they are a currency and not a security SEC is going to go nuts. XRP is going to start to move massively. You're going to see USTC unpegging. You're going to see the dinar. You're going to see what we've been talking about, which I want to get your opinion on as well, in terms of the timing, China, Taiwan, because that relates to Vietnam, as you remember, being removed out of communism by the Republic side of China. Yeah, yeah. Everything has this interconnected thread or weaving it, right? And then, you know, we can get into it a little bit later. Zimbabwe is hosting their elections. Chamisa has been, you know, getting louder and louder about what he's going to do when he gets back in, like President Trump. Yeah. And I don't know if you saw this, but the uh, also, this is important too, David, going back to Iraq for a minute. Did you know last week that Iraq paid off all their debts to the IMF? That's huge. I did not know that. The International Monetary Fund, they paid them back. I hope they paid them back in fiat currency. 
<laughs> of, I'm sure they did. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I don't know what the total was. I, I'm, it's somewhere between six and twenty billion dollars, which sounds like a lot to us, but that's chump change for them. Yeah. That it, just. Sorry, go ahead. It makes you think where they got it from, though, John. Where's that all of a sudden being generated from? So they've obviously had some um, something go on. Somebody's either injected a large cash from, or they've taken it from some economic benefit they've been involved with. That's interesting. That. Well, I'm sure the BRICS is involved, but don't don't forget, David, that this is another touch point, an, another web in in the thread of things. Iraq is number four in the Middle East in gold reserves and number thirty in the world, so they're not hurting. They've got plenty of resources to pull from. They've just been living off of oil and the dollar because they didn't want to have a um, versatile economy, mm -hmm. you know, because that means they would show their hand. People forget. And we've said this before, the Forex is a programmed rate. That's an artificial, that's not the real rate. People think that's the rate. It's not. The real rate is in the private sector. That's going to get released. Then once it goes public, it'll have a certain rate. Then it will free float on the new digital economic reality, right? Tokenized gold and other things, silver, such like XRP. We're going back to them. And XRP is also going to provide a bridge to peg to all these currencies as well. So that's how you build an abridgment to the new digital economic reality. And once that happens, then we'll find out what the real rate's going to be. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Um, where do you want to go next? And I mean, I was going to touch on Wall Street, actually, John. Sure, uh, go one ahead. Second. I'm just going to hit one button there. That. that. Sorry, guys, I just had to change laptops there. John, I was going to talk about Wall Street because I've never liked Wall Street. I've been watching it and everybody's saying, oh, it's getting better. The uh, the stocks are climbing. You need to invest in stocks and shares. I've never liked them simply because I just don't trust them. I can't tell who's a good guy, who's a bad guy. It's also manipulated. It's very, very old school, like Gentleman's Club. You only get what you pay for. And if you're not a member of the club, you don't get invited to the parties. Mm -hmm. So it seems to me that this should be something that people are also watching with what's going on in Wall Street. Well, I mean, yes. Uh, can I comment on that real quick? Because Absolutely. I have a thought That's why I asked you. Yeah. Okay, well, I just want to make sure in case you were, you know, we're going to have a counterthought. Um, two things on that. We're going to get a flash crash, and a flash crash technically is a crash. It's a, it's a correction, but it's still, it's still a crash by technical stock terms. And, uh, and it's necessary to right-size everything, right? But I think what people should be, just my humble opinion, what people should be watching, and I, it's not just me. I, I interview routinely, you know, financial subject matter people like Andy Shackman, uh, Bill Holter, uh, you know, Greg Manorino. I just had uh, Andy. Uh, I just had Lynette Zhang on yesterday. That's going to be coming on. That's a that's a fabulous interview. It was really good. And they all concurrently agree across the board. What people should be watching is the ten year Treasury yield bond market. That's the real key in the decoding, because the Fed to this point has been bailing it out, but bailing out the debt. But they're as as we know it right now. They're they're going to cessate or stop doing that. And what we're watching for in conjunction with a stock market crash, because that's what most people in the mainstream of society will watch, right? The normies. But we on the on this side, the educated, the awake and aware truthers here, I, I imagine is most people watching this, is the 10-year bond yield. Because once that hits 10%, you're going to see $100, $200 silver. Just so We've already seen silver. But remember I told you, it's once it gets to the 30 mark, it's going to keep going. Now yeah. it's pulled back a little bit because the bank's trying to slam it down, but people have also taken some profits from silver, but that's just going to kick right back. And the next step is probably $40, $50 is the next marker. But you start getting into a 10% bond yield failure, that yield curve inversion, as it's known, right? Where yeah. you're underwater because you have China, right? You know this, you have Russia, you have the whole of BRICS, you have Japan, I don't know why Japan isn't on the bricks yet. I am convinced they're going to be very, very soon because they're they're not they have two problems. They have an economic and a population um, regrowth or a, a, resur a resurgence problem in that country, which affects them economically. The two go hand in hand, right? Yeah. So Japan's dumping our ten-year Treasury yields like they're dumping over the side like the Boston Tea Party. I, I so, saw that and massive, massive numbers. Yes. So so when as that's happening. 
the inevitability of, of the bond yield curve just going kaput is going to be big. You, but again, I think you'll see a 10% drop this year. And then next year, you're going to see it just completely crater. And that is yeah. going to make it for, for people who are not prepared, like we are blessed to be prepared. And then the people listening, it's going to be pretty, it's going to be pretty daunting to say the least for most people. Well, this, this is why we get together because we still get questions about the currency. Why are you guys talking about different currencies? So this is my favorite reason, if I'm honest about this, is because I just don't trust Wall Street. I don't really understand it. I don't trust it. Stocks mm -hmm. and shares. And in fact, I'll, I'll tell a, a little true story. I have some land in a foreign country and I've owned it for years, over 15 years. And I, out of random chain of events, somebody wanted to buy it. So they, what they want to do is they want to pay in shares. I said, okay, but they have to do it electronically. And I said, I don't want electronic shares. Give me the share certificate. So I got it in my hand. And of course, I said, look, I'm not interested then. Let's do it in crypto or something else. Because um, I just don't, I don't trust shares. Um, the currencies we're talking about, I mean, for good reason, as we'll get back into it, this is where the average guy in the street can get involved by buying a few bucks. Um, it's very, very, very low um entry level i mean 50 dollars, even probably less so that's one of my favorite reasons behind it john because it gives you the average opportunity the average joe or, or joanne in the street that's always been intimidated by wall street you've always been intimidated by investments that they can now get involved in it so that's why we talk about this every month and i like the updates and all the signals because you're really good at that you can see what's coming over the horizon ah Tsunami's making a move over there. He's gone from here. We're getting mm -hmm. rid of this US, this UN representative. They've blown up all the bad guys in Iran. You know, what would be the odds of putting that on a bet in Vegas? Everybody in Iran being taken out in a helicopter. So, yeah, um, yeah, that's why I like it so much. So Wall Street does not float my boat. What no. else have you been tracking, John? You said something there. You just had a flash up on your screen. Some info has just come in right now, yeah? Yeah, thanks for the uh, segue there. Um, <laughs> it's a very good one. Uh, the House apparently has just, as of a few, it just came in a few minutes ago, the U.S. House of Representatives just passed an anti-CBDC bill, anti-surveillance, which aims to ban the Federal Reserve from creating a central bank digital currency. So let's talk about that for a second, right? Because I was listening to X-22 this week. He made a very cogent point. Right now, we're in a transition government, right? We know, I'm sure over there in you know, Spain, you told me about a month ago, Portugal basically sacked their entire government. And yeah, they did, yeah. Went largely unnoticed on the fake news. What yeah. a shock. That's like massively significant, right? We see... Uh, and we'll get to this and this is another juicy point in a minute we'll talk about, but uh, just remind me to talk about Klaus Slob or I call him Laos Slob. Yeah, we'll yeah. talk about him in a second, my least favorite person. Um, but, you know, what they're doing is they're putting markers down like on a po I'm not a gambler, but we all know the analogy of poker. You place your markers down on the table yeah. for a later for a later move. So what the house is doing because they know Trump's coming back. He's already commander in chief, but they know he's coming back to re resume his post as, as the true president under the Republic. Now, not the corporation, big mm -hmm. demarcation, big difference. Yeah. <laughs> so stick with me. This is a, a, this is a long, this is a, a lot of details in the point. So now they're laying down bills. They know the Senate and president won't pass it, but it doesn't matter because once Trump or whoever, you know, the, the military gets in there and they clean house on the House and Senate, he's going to have a clean slate. They can then activate those bills very quickly and reject <clears throat> the CBDC. So it's all being set up in place for a later marker date. That's why it's important. Uh, so that was one thing that just came out. And then Klaus Schwab or Klaus Slob stepping down from the World Economic Forum. Now, I, I believe they already took the real one out. I think this is a, a double that they've got in there. But regardless, they have to have an optic for the public to accept. I didn't know that. Know that just happened. When did that happen? A few days ago. This, oh, this really? That, that's great news. I mean, I, I call him the slug in a suit. He's just repulsive. Yeah. So well, Jim, he's, he stepped ahead, down. But I, I agree with you. I think he, the real guy's being prosecuted and executed. So, but this is all tying in again, isn't it? So they're all going to have an excuse why we don't see him anymore. Oh, he's retired. 
Well, I mean, look at look at uh, uh, federal Fed chair. Uh, um, uh, what's his name? Um, should know this. I mean, I deal with this all day long. But uh, you know, our, the Fed chair, um, Jerome Powell. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of information I'm trying to get out, folks. So bear with me. It's a lot rattling up there. Uh, Jerome Powell all of a sudden gets COVID, right? Which we know that what that means. That's another military marker to take him out. So. It's like those movies, those those uh, you know action movies or the Jason Statham movies where you know all the bad guys are here behind the, the back wall and he just pulls them out you know behind the scenes surreptitiously takes yeah. them out and it's like everybody's looking and going what just happened you know it's it's a very very seamless quiet um, stealthy I think is a good word move that's happening to take all these these scumbags out um bit by bit by bit so well, it's, it's falling um, apart really all of this oh yeah uh, if we look back to where we were two years ago i saw an interesting thing peru has now made it um anybody that follows the lbg whatever mm-hmm. this movement they've said let me just read it out because this kind of made me chuckle yeah, it's pretty funny uh i sent it to a peruvian friend of mine and it says um that basically they've made them all Mentally ill have declared them all. So if you follow that, LBGTQ, FYG, whatever. I've never even committed that to memory, that whole uh, anagram. Um, yeah, it's now you're, you're suffering from a mental illness, which I kind of agree with, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so behind the scenes going on, who's going to take over from Charles Schwab? I mean, that's just going to all fall apart because he's he's the brains, really, and the spokesperson behind it. He's the one that's been giving it all the money. I mean, Soros, no one's really seen him in public for a long time, George Soros. We know it was him that was orchestrating and paying all the migrant movements coming up from the southern borders into the U.S., orchestrating the invasion, again, trying mm-hmm. to destabilize the entire government. But that will all fizzle out as well, I would imagine. That will all be get back under control and when the commander in chief actually can stand in front of the white house steps. Um, right. t- let's go back to Zimbabwe, John, did we cover that enough? You think, have you got anything else on there? We know the, I do, I do have some up. other, I do have some, sorry, I do have some other things, but let's, let's circle back to Iraq real quick. Cause I sure. want to mop that. Um, it, some other information is also that an international group lifts Iraq from the bad financial list. So now that they've paid off the debts, this domino effect it produces a cacophony of other successful events in that when they pay off the debt, then it's like when you restore your credit, right? Which is a yeah. whole other subject. But when you clean up your credit, all these other things start happening as a result. So that's pretty cool because now that puts them in good standing. It's They've, they've been cleared by America. America is basically daring. When I say America, I mean the deep state, obviously, is daring Iraq to do it. They don't think Iraq's actually going to do it, but they will. Because like I said... Sudan is doing his job. They're getting pressure from China and Russia, who desperately need this RV to happen because they've got to power up their military and financial position. China's got a ton of debt. <clears throat> Russia's in a fortuitous position because they've got a great leader in Putin strategically, who uh, Russia in 2022 was one of the strongest economies, and they're slated to be again in 24 because, as you know, they're one of the heads of, of BRICS, yeah. uh, you know, arm chairing or, or quarterbacking the movement. So, but they, they still want this to happen. Um, so yeah, Iraq, I think is going to, you know, I think it's going to be, it's going to be a domino effect in my humble opinion of what we're seeing, David, of, you know, XRP, you know, right. Then the USTC pegging the dinar, uh, you're going to see, uh, the China Taiwan event, which I, I want to go back in a minute with you before we we'll get to that after Zimbabwe. Uh, what your opinion is on the timing of the China Taiwan event? My belief is it's going to be this summer, because once Iraq goes, it's just that they don't want to attack when Trump's back in, because he's going to power up the military to be so strong that would be a, a stupid move to make. You want to do it while the proverbial drawbridge is down, while America is perceived as weak and vulnerable. That's the time to attack and do this little. And it's going to be a short process, certainly in comparison to that whole Ukrainian nonsense, which we know. Russia's already decimated them. In fact, I've seen what you've seen, probably that Russia, we put in our telegram, Russia is already making swift moves to rebuild up Donbass and Lugansk as we speak. They're yeah. already they're rebuilding up the land, the apartment complexes, providing food and water, because a lot of those people are Russian nationalists to begin with. So 
that's a kind of in a nutshell where we are with, with Iraq. Now into Zimbabwe. Yeah, um, IMF just announced that Zimbabwe switch to gold back zig is a hugely important step. Uh, remember that China has uh, about two weeks ago invested $300 million to get into the mining metals component or industry of Zimbabwe because Zimbabwe has the world's largest gold reserve. We've touched on that many times, yeah. but they also have a ton of rhodium, phosphorus, diamonds, silver, you name it. They're probably the only country that can go toe to toe with Iraq and surpass them. So there's an interesting correlation between the two in that respect, in terms of, of uh, um, assets in the ground, I guess yeah. is the word I was looking for. So, uh, you know, Zimbabwe is doing great things. They're already powering up their ZIG from the RTGS in gold. There, there was an article the other day that I saw here. Um, let me just see if I can find it for a second, really. Uh, here we go. Zimbabwe to increase gold production following the adoption of gold-backed currency. What a coincidence. So they're now starting to reveal how much gold they've always had, right, to the public. Then you have Chimisa, who is the elections. Remember we talked about... Uh, Elon Musk launched up a bunch of Starlink satellites in Zimbabwe, I think at least four Yeah, in July, that's slated, right? And that's because the elections are coming up in August. They want to get ahead of that election interference. We're probably doing the same thing here in America. I'm sure of it. Again, the countries copy each other. So you have Chamisa, who's made some strong statements that when he's back, like Trump says, first order of business is to return the sovereignty to his people, remove the corruption, that's how you bring the sovereignty and then massive prosperity to all, keyword, all the nations. Because Zimbabwe, once again, we haven't talked about this in a while, so it's a good reprise, is the breadbasket to the world's economy by way of gold and many other things. So Chamisa is what he's going to do is they're already powering up the Zig dollars because the public's aware of that. But then those bonds that we're holding that we always talk about, right? Yeah, yeah. That's going to get tucked in under the Zig. So the Zig will represent the bonds and dollars. And he's going to power those up against the U.S. dollar and gold. I thought that new bond, that new note that they released was interesting because it's exactly the same as that that large note that the the bond note that we're holding. It's quite funny. It's, I thought it was it at first when they released. It. I was like, oh, it's very similar. So I think there's a hidden secret clue in that one straight away. Well, there is, but there's also QR codes on the inside of it too. That's the other difference. They're yeah, powering it up with a new digital economy. Yeah, I didn't comment on the, the central bank digital currency. You know, I never had any faith that that was going to go through anyway. But again, they like to release things just to panic you and scare people. So it's great news that the actual, because once the US reject it, the whole world will. So just to put the final slamming the door on that horrible exactly. um, attempted inversion of everybody's privacy. Totally. David, what are your thoughts? Turning it over to you for a minute on a question. Now is a segue because this affects Vietnam. Um, what from because you're really good at the geopolitical side, as you know, and reading those tea leaves, what do you see as a do you first of all, do you agree with the premise that they, they should do it now before Trump returns? Well, if and, they're going to do it at all, because I think some of these other things that we thought were going to happen, they found other ways to solve the situation rather than a military incursion, which I think is quite interesting. China going dumping all of the U.S. bonds was i was like oh my the the numbers i mean it's just like we don't want it it's trash make paper airplanes out of it make paper lanterns out of it the right. point isn't it i mean and I, I mean that is a massive massive kick in the financial balls to all of the all of the people in that industry in the us where they thought oh this is as good this is a guarantee and now the chinese says we don't want it it's junk um Ultimately, I, I believe that there's still two people in play in China. I think the good guys and the bad guys. You know, Ping, is he a good guy? Is he a bad guy? I mean, he's very pally with Putin. He's doing all the right um, traveling recently, I've noticed as well. He's been attending meetings and people have been attending meetings with him. So he, he is palling up with uh, the BRICS economies. And I think that gives him a certain, a certain amount of power. But we do know that Taiwan is still a very strong, I mean, that's the Far East's Ukraine, as far as I'm concerned, where they're all in nefarious businesses all being taken and processed, the money laundering, the child trafficking, etc. I think Taiwan is, a, is still a hotbed for that. So it does need to be taken out. But are they going to do it this close? Because the thing about your theory, John, is it's only it's not even six months away, the elections. All right. Once he takes right. power, this is going to be January. So what's that? It's seven months. 
So does that give them enough time to get in and make such a difference? If if the Chinese are intending to do that, are they going to, you know, just do a, an optical one where it's going to be a little sort of slap on the wrist and everybody says, oh, you know, it's a decisive military victory. I just don't know because the way things have gone in the past, when we thought there was going to be, you know, what's what we've been calling for in the Middle East, I still think there is going to be a little bit more missile launches, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't have an opinion. The timing is interesting. When you brought that up, I was thinking, oh, because if they go in now and get it done now, one of the first things that Trump's going to do is he's going to say, right, get out now. He's going to, he's going to invert it. He's going to put it back to normal. So whether he's on um, their team or not on that particular move, I don't know. It's something that's, again, it's so far up in the end. There's that many different possibilities. It could go either way, personally. Well, I, I, I'm agree. First of all, I agree with you, but I would say that just adding to what you said, I think this thing's been planned for years. Taiwan's ready oh, for absolutely. it. They know, they know what's coming. They're no, they're no dummies. They've got you know uh, landmines strategically in place for all this. I think it's going to be like the uh, Gulf War in 91, where it's just kind of a short theatrical thing you know it's kind yeah, of an about phase days, something like that yeah you know i think it might be maybe two weeks or whatever but it's it's going to be a short-term thing and what it what it, it's not the war itself it's what it represents because i think chi they've dealt with him enough where he's on the right side with trump you know they're all together on this right we know that yeah they're all you know bosom buddies so you know chi is working with trump they've orchestrated this for a while i think that She's on the Republic side and they're going to go in there with the purposes of freeing up Vietnam enough to free them up from communism. Cause I don't know if you saw this, this is a very important underrated point, David, and you can research it yourself. You don't have to take my word for it. Look it up yourself. You will. Weeks ago, Vietnam's government said they're going to get involved in the Forex market and start powering up the Dom. What a coincidence that we're seeing silver start to break out. Because what's Vietnam going to be backed by? Silver, mm -hmm. Litecoin, a big cryptocurrency, oil, the Brent crude that they have in their oceans, probably some percentage of gold. They've got manpower reserves with a tremendous workforce. China has sent over somewhere between 60 to 70% estimated uh, manufacturing companies going over to Vietnam. We know that. There's a tremendous amount that they do over there in manufacturing. So again, their issue has never been financial. It's been corruption. Not unlike the U.S., not unlike pretty much the entirety of the world. It just oh. functions differently. Differently, so they have to treat Vietnam differently than they would, let's say, Iraq situation. Yeah, but we, what we didn't explain to the audience is why we've gone from China, Taiwan, and then bring in Vietnam in because Taiwan is the major manufacturing of all the electronic, um, the circuit boards yes. and. A lot of that is also going to be um, being processed in Vietnam, but Vietnam silver is one of the components that is absolutely necessary in these transactions and these manufacturing plants. So what happens in Taiwan will have a, a, a flow on effect. And because it's really close, it's very it's just across the water there. You can more or less see it from that part of the world. <laughs> But yeah, mm -hmm. Vietnam is all set up. I mean, when I was there in February, I was fascinated to see how for a communist country, it did not feel communist at all. You know, they, they had a lot of red, the, the national flags out because there was something going on. It was a national holiday or something or celebration day. But people are living very, very free. There's no police. There's no loudspeakers. There's nobody being beaten over the head with anything. A lot of tourism there. Beautiful country. Um. It's very, it's very westernized, John. You'd be surprised. I mean, for Southeast Asia, you still see them on the bicycles and the rickshaws, but then all brand new Toyotas are all driving around in four by fours. So it's it's ready to be modernized like that with a massive influx of of industry coming in and um, applying that to the new generation. Because I found the new generation were all educated; they all have mm -hmm. some form of education. I mean, above high school. A lot of them are, um, and they're, they're, they're ready to go. The new young workforce, it's a very young country. So I can see how that's going to affect the world because Vietnam will take the horse by the reins when they get the chance. If you give all these young people an opportunity to build their own careers and businesses, they'll go for it. Uh, absolutely. And you showed, you're absolutely right. You also, if I recall, when you were there, you showed me some pictures privately of 
the menus changing prices. Yeah, and they, what they did the is zeros. yeah, they just dropped all the zeros for instead of being a hundred thousand, they just put a hundred, and um, everybody who just was not using these zeros, you know, how much is that? One hundred. You mean a hundred thousand? Yeah, yeah, but one hundred. Nobody was using the zeros, which is a classic case of just ha having to adjust the currency by just shaving off a load of zeros. They did it in Turkey. I remember 25 years ago, just shaved off a load of zeros. Inflation, problem solved. <laughs> just change the money, take the old money out of the circulation, put the new ones in there with less zeros on them. And it was like, I don't know, 45 million lira for something in Turkey when I was there in the uh, in the 90s. I was like, oh, you can't work that out. It was the same in Spain. 100,000 pesetas, 50,000 pesetas was worth about $25, if I remember. But, you know, mm. all these zeros, 1 million, 10 million, 100 million, you, you, you couldn't get your head around it. You used to like, okay, $1, get me a Coca-Cola. But now having to spend 450.5 million lira, <laughs> you can't, yeah. you just can't get your head into it. So I noticed that. But as a country, the people are ready the people are ready. Uh, they're very industrious. They're, they're hardworking. Um, I saw thousands and thousands of acres of potential farmland and, and crops. And there's mountain ranges and jungle ranges and the, half the country, I'd say even more, has not even really been utilized properly by the population because flying around it, all I saw was greenery, untamed, thick, dense forests, and, well, jungle anyway and that's tropical rich land you could you know i'm not saying chop it all down <laughs> don't worry on the uh environmentalists i don't want to be attacked by them i'm just saying it was such a big country that hardly any of it was being used or utilized um which is nice as well but as the population grows these people are going to be needing to be employed and do something so infuse yeah. them with a new um income stream that they can get their teeth into something you'll see what happens uh, and then we're talking about all the vast resources that they've got as well. There with the oil and the minerals, the rubber and coffee, you know, they, it's a great country. I want to ask you a question, David, on the backs of that with respect to Vietnam. And, and, and I know it's a somewhat of an esoteric question, but you've been there, you've studied the country, you've studied the people. In, in, how do you surmise that they're going to get the citizens over there adjusted to the reset and them having so much more purchasing power over against the dollar versus being upside down all this time? Well, I think I think that because this it's a very young population, I think they're going to mm -hmm. be used to it, going to say, OK, now my salary is worth a lot more. They'll start building their own houses. They'll put the kids in education. They'll open up their own little factory. They'll get it a little bit bigger because, like I say, they're very industrious. You know, you'll see a guy like a tiny little kiosk repairing iPhones, putting batteries and screens on. So if he's in the, the market for electronics, I could see him expanding that into, you know, selling televisions or whatever. And like all new communities, everybody needs something. If you've ever been to a, one of the Caribbean islands, you've noticed that you, you, simple things, you just can't get them. Like I remember, I couldn't get a decent steak. So I used to have to say, listen, would you import some American beef? Because this meat is terrible. So I, I think mm -hmm. it'll all be on market demand. I would imagine things like the, the millions of scooters there. They're all driving scooters. Those will move into cars. Then there'll be more. They do a lot of manufacturing of clothing. I saw mm -hmm. all these big brands that are all made in Vietnam. All of the clothing was for, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll do it. Then the, the luxury items market will grow as well. But I could see them all settling down as well because in the culture, John, you, they don't really get married until they're financially able to do it. They don't just have children and, and get married if th th they don't have a house or a, a plan. The parents are very much, well, what's your plan, pal, before you take my daughter away? Sure. Um, so I can see them just expanding in a normal, organic way when their ingenious little brains will be saying, okay, you know what's a good idea? I've been working this fruit and vegetable area for a long time but now let me expand it into a supermarket let me get more products in. let me get import things and i mean russia is a, a great example when tucker carlson went to russia he was showing famous brands that we're paying six times more there's one famous morning baked beans is something that the english eat a lot and there's one particular brand which is very famous and they were selling them for a third of the price of what they are in England, but they've already exported them into Russia, paid the duty, got them on the shelves, 
and still selling them at a third of what we're paying and they're still making money. So all of these mm-hmm. exported goods and luxury items, I can see all that growing there as well because the, the supermarket facilities were limited because people bought all the food off the street. The meats bought off the street, vegetables bought off the street. But because they're, they're so ingenious and, and they'll be orientated on an economic um, advancement, and I'd say Zimbabwe would be the same. Yeah. Because, you know, that would be the same thing. People saying, well, I'm sick of, you know what they do there for, for a tire, for example, John. Well, here's a, here's a really good example. A refrigerator. When your refrigerator breaks, you just say, ah, oh, it's the end of that, you know. See you later, refrigerator. Um, and you'll just get somebody to remove it and you'll go and get a new one. But in these countries, they'll rebuild the compressor. They'll refill all of the cooling system. They'll fix the problem, rewire it, and then it, it's working again. And I think this sort of situation, so I'm sick of doing this. Let's just go and buy a new one. All of these luxury goods will improve as well. And then I'd like to hope that with the humanitarian um, feeling inside everybody, once they get over that initial shock, they'll start doing things for the community. Let's improve the hospital. Let's get better drinking water. Let's put new infrastructure. Let's look after our old people. All of these things will all start coming as well because you've. I, I have to believe that the side of the humanitarian um, feeling and energy and spirit that God puts all inside us of a caring again about our neighbors, which we talked about at the start of the show. We all just want peace. We want people to be happy. It's nice to coming out in the morning, seeing people smiling and saying good morning, rather than pulling a pistol out and say, give me your wallet, <laughs> which exactly. is the neighborhood you live in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Exactly. And, you know, absolutely. We, we need to engender, David, a, a society that's, especially here in America, from my standpoint, of not so much disposable obsolescence, but building things that last again, you know, getting back to the, the 1950s in terms of morals and values and the way yeah. that we make manufacturing back in America again. And, you know, you know the whole situation with illegal immigration, you know, I, I would think the majority of people want to go back to their home country. They want to be able to go back where it's safe and prosperous by by leveling the playing field globally with what we're talking about. It achieves all of that, right? It's, it's, um, you know, it allows these people to go back to their families. They've been estranged from for how many, who knows, right? Could be years, could be decades, God forbid. Uh, They just want to go back to their families. I mean, that's what I think we all want is to get back to the center of things, family, faith, you know, loving one another, as you were saying, love your yeah. neighbors, you love your, love your neighbor, you love yourself it, it, without going into the weeds too much. I mean, we have a self-esteem issue. You know, we have a lot of people in the world that don't even like themselves. And you can see that by the way we're treating each other and the short fused tempers. And it's just some of the obnoxious comments that are made by some of these keyboard trolls that clearly don't like themselves and engender that spirit and everybody else is a, it's, it's what the enemy came to do was create division, right? But yeah, God, yeah, came, yeah. God came so that he could bring life and life abundantly, uniting, synergy. Everyone I talk to, including you, wants to get back to a community-based mentality, right? You don't have to necessarily live in small little communities where you have these little postage stamp yards, but within the confines of your community, even if you have 10 acres or 30 acres or five, you can still connect with, your neighbors, you can connect with the farmers, you can connect with the people that that make the community go, right? Yeah. And so I think that's a universal axiom to your point. Two other countries I think we should be watching out for their finances as well, before I forget to, to mention this. We've talked about Iraq, we've talked about Vietnam, we've talked about Zimbabwe as we typically do. And let's not forget because people always flood in my channel about the Venezuelan Boulevard. And yes, yeah, yeah. Formerly the fourth large wealthiest country in the world, they will return historically to prominence with the Boulevard. Absolutely. Once they get rid of the corruption and some good governance, I think President Trump years ago talked about Juan Guaido as a particular potential candidate that would be a nationalist to restore them, much like Malay is doing in Argentina. Right. Yeah. Watch the Argentinian, uh, is it the peso, I believe? Yeah. And then also the, I was just talking about them earlier, the Lebanese pound, right? They've literally been pounded down 90%. So that means they've got nowhere to go, but up as they get rid of that corruption, that would be a good investment. I would humbly, not a financial advisor, but somebody who's been in this for a while, sharing information. I think that would be an excellent 
opportunity for people as the next iteration, as these currencies start to move, Lebanese pound. And of course, you know, being there, the Thai bot, you know, I had an opportunity. Yeah. I've had an opportunity to talk to earlier this year to some uh, uh, music convention I went to at uh, in Anaheim in California near uh, Disneyland, another great bastion of hope. Uh, But uh, there's a big convention center there that I go to every year. And uh, a lot of, uh, uh, Thailand business people do business there, own certain hotels and restaurants, et cetera. And I had a chance to talk to them and, and they were very, you know, just a very cavalier conversation about the Thai bot. And they were very high and keen on that next year, that that's going to be returned to prominence through a lot of the assets that they have. And you've been there, so you know. I could see that as well. That's very similar to Vietnam. I mean, Thailand have been... Um cashing in on the tourism industry since the James Bond movies in the 70s and 80s, you know, but um, again, very industrious, very smart, um, beautiful country mm-hmm. that you can see that, but there is a, there's still a lot of poverty. You, you can still see it in the cities and these are the people that need to be held by this. So um, speaking of your, you know, your small communities, this is how going back to the 50s, people didn't lock their doors. They weren't mm-hmm. worried about getting robbed. You know, your neighbors would come over and borrow your lawnmower and you weren't frightened of, am I going to get it back? I've never seen them before. Right. I live in a, well, one of the places I, I, I spend, I float between three, four places is um there's a large car park in our community and then we have an apartment building and hardly anybody locks their doors in the cars. You know, you might do, you might not do. And I pulled out there the other day, I had a, a bit of a low tire in one car. So I took out my compressor from the back pumped the tire up and I forgot to put it back in my car, went away for a week. When I came back, it was in exactly the same place. Nobody touched it, you know, and I've seen people leave uh, golf clubs out. They take something out the back of the car. I even left a case of wine there once and nobody touched it in the car park in the large community building. So it's a very nice feeling. And if you haven't experienced that before in your life, you know, leaving an apple pie on the windowsill to cool and no one steals it. It's nice. People want to live like that. You know, you want to be able to trust your neighbors and um, say hello with a smile on your face. And, I, and a lot of people are not like that because it's the stress and the daily lives that they got to get up to. You know, every day is a battle for some people, John. They get up and they go to, they go to war. They don't go to work. It's a battle, you know, between getting out of a, a busy city onto the metro or the city bus or even sitting in traffic. It just, it's stressful. And I don't, I never believed life was supposed to be like that. Working all the hours that God sends just to, make somebody else rich um once you empower people with their own capabilities that they can make decisions about their own life financially and they're not having to say yes sir no sir to all of these employees they will do things that they will love that they will enjoy and i think our art and culture and music and literature and i think i think invention and science and technology will take a huge leap because there's so many people out there that they have a the thinking outside of the box and they want to get some amazing, you know, I don't know, like an engine that works on magnets. Have you seen that? It's a, a magnetic energy constant. doesn't cost anything. There's something about it. Into production. And so many things out there that people would just put their hearts and souls in to, impue, to improve humanity. And this is why, you know, buying 50, 60, 100, 200, 250, whatever you can afford, having these currencies just sitting there. Because I also know it's a nice feeling. Because you're in that position, I'm in that position where we just kind of we know where it is in the house. Well, any minute now, any day now, that's going to be nice. We'll cash it in and we can begin. Whereas if you're putting your money in into the bank and getting two percent, you're worried about the bank going under. It, it's a it is a worry. But these con- these currencies from these countries that we're talking about, they are going to improve and it, it is going to flip. They're all going to start getting boosted once all this corruption is thrown out. We're getting very close, in my opinion. We are. We are. There's anyway, no doubt about it, David. Yeah, we're going to leave the link below. If you want to click on the link, um, they'll take good care of you. You can get all of these currents. We always get the same questions. Can I get it to Australia? Can I get it to New Zealand? Yeah. I mean, we've had people buy it and ship it to Australia, New Zealand, so you can get it anywhere in the world. Um, and if there's any other questions, please get in touch with John. He's the expert and this. All I do is just have a little chit chat because you're background on on that and the geopolitical that we're both watching it it often can unveil um interesting things john don't you think 
I do. I just want to add a little caveat that I don't handle the currency side. That's my business partner, Chris, runs mm -hmm. the point. He's and he deals with all that. I just educate people and advise them on what I'm seeing with the currency trends and even you know certain bonds like Zimbabwe, obviously precious metals, um, the right cryptos. You know, just one thing I wanted to add to what you said. It was very important. Is a very under, underrated point that you made about you know the slave mentality. We have been certainly here in America, and I would imagine through the entirety yeah. of most of the world because it's all interconnected, right? Yeah, um, we're we're a big but a small world, and so we're all dealing with the cabal. They lied to us. We we didn't. They didn't teach us finance courses in high school. That was on purpose. Yeah, they didn't want us to be free. But what I do know is that we are not put on this earth to pay bills and die by God. We are put here to use the talent, the talents and the purposes that he imbued us with from birth to help one another, to serve one another and to serve him. And you can't do that when you're working a slave nine to five, as you said, making someone else rich. And then all they offer you is these lousy 401ks and IRAs, which most people don't understand how they work. And then they tax you on the back end to yeah. try to scare you. I deal with this all the time, um, you know, because we work with uh, a really great company in Miles Franklin for gold and silver, pneumatic coins, and also, you know, 401 and K and IRA conversions. And, and, you know, these sick people at the banks or even at these corporations, oh, if you, if you pull it out, you're going to get 10% fee or 30% tax, which is bogus. And it's designed to scare people to keep them enslaved, to keep the status awesome. quo. The most important thing about this discussion, David, just to summarize to your point, the currencies are a component of the bigger picture of becoming your own central bank. Sure. We talk about that on my channel all the time. I'm sure you do as well. And again, if people are asking, how do you do that? Have food, have clean water, have land source, have land source, preferably with water have the right foreign currencies, have the right cryptocurrencies, have precious metals that you can touch, get out of the paper market, right? Yeah. Um, build community, grow your own food, um, you know, re-educate your family. I'm personally a big component of homeschooling, taking the power away from the cabal and making yourself as independent and self-sufficient as possible is really going to become the key because even though we're going to have a respite, David, of, of, of peace here, um, as Trump gets back and all these things, you know, countries become nationalistic in their ideology and their thinking as they should, that doesn't mean the enemy is going to stop. They're still going to try to push this hate reset. They're still going to try to push Agenda 2030. They're going to try to enslave people in these smart cities. If people think that that's a done thing, they're mistaken. They're still going to try. But if you've prepared correctly, like we have, you're not concerned about it because you've been proactive. The key is to take action and have the right mindset. That's really critical. Yeah, I, I, I have a much easier way of thinking about it. You know, when you watch, you used to watch a horror movie as a kid and you'd be terrified. But at the end of the day, it's just a guy in a rubber mask. And it's the same thing here. They'll tell you horror stories and try to scare you. But at the end of the day, it's just a bluff. Mm -hmm. It's just a mask. Once the lights go on, the monster's not so scary anymore, is it? As you understand that, it's the same thing with all of these people, what they're trying to do. John, it's been great catching up with you. We come to the top of the hour. I've got to move on and do something else. I've got something else I've got planned. And we'll sure. be back with you probably three, four weeks, as we normally do, once a month, more or less. Yeah. Sounds good. Always a pleasure connecting, mate. Please, yeah. If you've got any questions, put it in the comments down below. John will get back to you. I know you monitor them. And I look forward to talking to you again. So actually, we talk all the time, mostly every day. We're texting back and forth. But on camera, I'll be back with you in a month. And uh, yeah, thank you very much, John. It was a great show. Thank you for sharing. And we'll see Likewise. you very, very, very soon. Thanks, Indeed. guys. Bye-bye.